Hey everybody, welcome to Dad Talk today. I am here with Shelly Luther. Shelly, how you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. It is so nice to meet you. I know you're gonna be speaking at CPAC, uh, I think it's tomorrow? Tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm the salon owner that went to jail for opening my business under the COVID restrictions. Um, I just didn't think it was right. We shut down for a month. Um, and then after a month, I was like, we gotta do something. And so I opened back up and ended up in jail. What was that like, you know, just trying to take care of your business, try to take care of your family, just like anybody, and uh, being put in jail for trying to do so? We didn't have a choice. Right. And so when you're backed into a corner and you don't have a choice, you just, it's like survival at that point. And, I, and I'm not someone that wants to live off the government and my stylist didn't want to either. We wanted to work. And so I just opened and did the only thing I knew that what I could. Right. I, and I believe many fathers and mothers as well are going through the same thing inside a family court. And I know we were talking a little bit about this. You're familiar about that process. Could you tell everybody about, you know, what you know about the family law courts? Yes. Um, so I have actually, I have custody of my daughters, but um, my husband, we had to fight for custody for his son. Um, I know a lot of courts want to just automatically give custody to the mom. Yep. And we had to pay a lot of money to just get half custody, 50% of Tim's son. And so we worked really hard for that. We were successful, but it shouldn't have cost all that money. It shouldn't have been that decision from the beginning. He's a great dad. Right. How was the process in, in fighting for your husband's child different from your experience? When you well, I was, this, mine was a while ago. My kids are a little older than his. And, um, my ex at the time just assumed I would get the kids and so he didn't even really fight honestly to be honest um, and so he was more like the every other weekend Wednesday type thing or whatever of course as a mom I want my kids to see their dad as much as possible it's good for them right um, but when we fought for Tim's son it was uh, we were lucky enough to get a judge that um, sides with dad some of the times or wants to so now what was that like seeing him go through that it was really hard it was harder for him though because I had already gone through it and you know and I just he, he was scared of well what if my son hates me um, a lot of guilt um, a lot of feelings of well I just want to do what's best for him but um, and I said no you hold on to this you hold on to him he everything will be fine when he first started staying at our house, um, he's like, I just want to go back to my house, mom's house, or whatever, what, the comfortable house. Right. And I said, no, he's staying. No, he's staying. And, and he finally, we finally get to the groove where he's fine now. And we look back on it and kind of laugh. I'm like, remember when you didn't want to stay with us? Yeah, that was so weird. You know, he's 11 now. Right. So, you know, there is a lot of second guessing, I think, when these dads go through family court because they're saying, gosh, am, am I dragging my child through this unnecessarily? And then society still is very well, kids belong with moms, there's still this every other you know, weekend stereotype that's there. So, you know, a lot of times we see successful men are backed by support. Yeah. So when you're saying that he's second guessed, you are right there saying, no, babe, we're doing this. No, we're doing it because I knew that he would only be happy if we had his son as much as possible. We, we had to. Um, and so that was really important to both of us. Absolutely. So they got some shared parenting legislation going on in Texas. I know we were talking a little bit about that uh, House Bill 803 that would give a uh, rebuttable presumption of shared parenting to mothers and fathers upon divorce. How do you feel about that? I think that if um, the parents are equally, um, they can take care of the child, yep. um, they can take care of themselves, they're responsible people, it should be equal no matter what, that's what's best for the kid. Fit, willing, and able. Absolutely. Yep. And no other factor. Fit, willing, and able. That you're feeding them, they're getting to school, they're happy, um, their needs are taken care of. Half and half, that's what's best for the kids. You know, it seems like that the kids have become almost products in a way for the government because they know that parents will pay to see that their children. And that's where the incentive is coming. we got to start getting some of those incentives out because I, I feel like money is really fueling what we're seeing behind the scenes with the children. And uh, if we can get some bills in there like that, I believe it will definitely get some solutions. Sure. And it's not, I mean, who wants to spend all this money on attorneys when that money could be spent on the kids? Towards the kids. Yeah. And it also calls animosity between the, the two parents and they kind of work the kid against each other. You just don't. If it's just known that, okay, your dad's a good guy, he's, mm -hmm. you know, he's going to get half custody. I think it would save a lot of heartache in, yeah, the, in the beginning. Right. Mm -hmm. And if it's just known, like, of course your dad's going to get you half of the time. Right. He's a great guy. You know what, Shelly, I'm 
looking forward to seeing you speak tomorrow. Thank you. And uh, you know what? I have a lot of respect for you standing up for what you believe in and going Thank and opening you. up that shop. You probably knew probably what could happen when you did that, but you stood for what you believe in. And that's what we need our patriots to do right, right now more than ever. Uh, there's lots of things that's breaking down our families. They, they're coming and they, they don't really care about you. You're going to have to stand up and you got to stand for something. That's definitely what you did. So thank you. Thank you for that. Where can everybody find you if they want to keep up with what's going on? CourageToStand.com. We actually started a show. Yeah. And we are actually putting a spotlight on heroic people that have done things they never thought were imaginable. And it, we want to um, emulate that in the population and say, look, if they can do that, I can. We're going to get a lot more people active yeah, that's awesome. um, that weren't normally, because I, I wasn't a political person before this. And now look, I'm sitting here talking to you guys right now. Anybody can do this. You just have to want to and know that the, um, the chance is out there. If you want to change the world, whether you like politics or not, you're going to have to get involved in it. Right. Do something. Yeah, that's yeah. where it happens. Shelly, it was so nice talking to you. And uh, guys, go check that out. Looking forward to seeing her tomorrow. And we will be right back. Bye.